um, so this is the third in the book launch series. So welcome to everybody. Thanks ever so much for joining. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's session. I'm hoping to run it a bit like a team coaching session when we get into the tools and techniques. So hopefully everybody will be okay with that. And obviously I can stop the recording at any moment and then restart it if you're not comfortable sharing stuff that's gonna be put onto YouTube. So just let me know if you need me or Aliona to pause the recording as we're going along. So for those who are watching the video on YouTube, I would like to say hello to you. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, it seems that the world gets smaller every day with the advent of technology, which is fantastic. So as I say, this is the third in the series of the book launch for coaching self-organizing teams. Dun, dun, dun. The books. So I haven't actually taken them out of the box yet. So you are, along with me, seeing them for the first time in their full glory. So we'll take out the packing material. Things have come all the way from the UK, which is why they've taken so long. And um, oh, I'm a bit ham-fisted here because of me, me miss. And as you can see, this is the book itself. Woohoo! Fantastic. Um, so Yumi, I, I promised you a copy of this book for your generous contributions. So that one of those will be in the post to you. Um, I think, um, Sarika, you've got one on order, so hopefully it will be with you soon. Dean, get yours on order now. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> so there you go. The book has arrived in time for Christmas, which is fantastic. I was wondering if it would, um, but I'm absolutely delighted it's uh, arrived in time. Um, for those of you who are new to the series and maybe just logging in for the first time, we are tweeting things, putting things on social media using the hashtag CSOT Flourish, which stands for Coaching Self-Organizing Teams Flourish. So please tweet, comment on LinkedIn, wherever, using that hashtag, and then we'll be able to know me. I'm sorry for those of you who do are on the call. Um, <laughs> I'm doing this for those people who are listening into the video. Uh, my name's Ro. I'm the author of these books. I specialize in change and coaching, team coaching specifically, obviously. And coaching self-organizing teams that I wrote before around group coaching is probably the closest related to the one on coaching self-organizing teams. And I also borrowed a bit from 50 Top Tools for Coaching. And the topic of today's session is obviously tools and techniques. So um, you can see I've been writing about coaching tools. And everybody of are the core cool questions that the book seeks to answer. So there they are on the screen. Um, I guess today the, the one that is probably... Um, the most around tools is how do we create meaningful work in the context? I think that one is probably the topic of today's talk. Um, in a minute, so sorry, there's a fly flitting around the house. It's it's very hot here in Perth at the moment and it's fly season. And my husband went out and, and left the back door open, which is fatal in Perth because then you get an influx of flies. So they're currently buzzing around me at the moment. And my cat is also flitting around wanting to be let out so I apologize again just a quick reminder of the topics that are covered in the book um, the first one is also understanding about team coaching what it is um, and what the core premises of the book is and I'm just noticing we've got Fatima who's waiting to join in so I've left her in the room and um, <clears throat> obviously we then talk about team coaching and, and self-organizing teams where I go into a bit more about what is self-organization where does it come from what is team coaching actually about Contracting is really what the subject of chapter three is about, is that how do we set up for success and progress? It's about getting the groundwork right, and we'll do a bit of contracting in a minute. Um, last week, we talked about the group think trap, and we went into the very fascinating world of behavioral science. Um, certainly, I'm going to do more on that in the coming year. And <clears throat> I've signed up with something called 42 courses, which is all around behavioral science. Um, so I've, I'm on a learning journey myself over the next year to get more in-depth knowledge about behavioral science and build on what I know already. Um, the fifth chapter is around healthy conflict um, and understanding how that makes a difference in teams, that if you don't have that little frizz on there, then teams can get a bit stuck in the ways. Or if they try and avoid conflict, then eventually it just all boils over and causes more harm than good. So having that healthy balance of conflict is really important. Today's topic is all about tools and techniques to aid best thinking. And <clears throat> I've been really excited about prepping for some of the things that I've actually done in the past as well. Um, so I'm going to share some of those with you and hopefully, with your permission, um, ask you to have a go with some of the tools yourself as well. So we're actually going to be using the creativity of the brains in the room to come up with some different tools um, so don't panic. There'll be nothing too complicated. I've got some very simple tools and techniques that we can use to actually create some tools. 
And then the, the chapter around how to cope with change is all about obviously managing change, working with change, flexing with change. And then the final one addresses that key premise of, of self-organizing teams because it's not for every organization. So there in a nutshell is the book, um, which I recap every time. Again, it's that behavioral science, repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, so let's get into the, the topic of the tools. But before we do that, actually, I'm going to stop sharing that and I'm going to do something a bit different this week because I want to get you involved in the conversation as well. So what I'm going to be sharing is, again, this is just demonstrating to you how you can quickly create a tool on the fly. So what I'm sharing to do with Christmas. So what I would like you to do is just have a look at those pictures and pick one of the images that you see on the screen there that maybe speaks to you and just give us a a sort of two minute or one minute sort of explanation of why you've chosen it and why it has particular meaning for you. So who would like to begin? I, I don't mind going for it, Rob. Go for it, Dean. So uh, the one on the right with the, um, what are the soldiers called again? I forgot, <laughs> no crackers, is it? Oh yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I suppose uh, um, my son, uh, he was a big fan of them uh, growing up. So there's, there's about just four kind of miniature ones that are around the house for Christmas. And there's a, there's a kind of a large one. It's probably a two foot long. Um, so that kind of grabbed my attention. And obviously just that there's a few different items that, um, in the picture as well. So that, that's kind of probably what I, the image that pulled me in the, the quickest, I would think. Nice. Yeah. So that, that connection with your son immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. 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 Love it. I'm, I'm happy to go next row. Um, I guess for me, it's the one um, that's uh, that's about baking cookies. Um, I guess for me, Christmas has always been about um, about food, and definitely since I've moved to Australia um, from um, from the Netherlands, uh, yeah, it's it's still so weird to, to, to do Christmas with 30 degrees. Um, so I, I don't put up a tree. I, I don't associate it now with snow and all that kind stuff yeah. so um but yeah food is still there so uh, i i'm going for that one yeah love it i can go next um i think for me the picture in the center is interesting uh, because it's all about giving and in fact it's about giving and receiving but for me it's more about giving something and then for some people i guess it would be about receiving but it's about both it's it's the whole uh, i don't know if i want to call it the culture but the environment or a feeling of giving and receiving so yeah that's that's what it is about and given the season yeah it's, it's all about that yeah for me. yeah love it thank you hi Ro. hi so i would also say the picture in the middle because uh in india not everyone celebrates christmas but we all have since school everyone's always participated in secret santa so yeah. giving gifts receiving gifts people putting thought into it it's always been a big part of december for us and yeah. it's always fun nice so, Nice, yeah, fantastic. And I'll offer it to Aliona. Would you like to choose one as well, Aliona? Yeah, I like. Uh, I would like to choose the one with this one with the cooking with the baking because mostly on Christmas I always bake. So I really love baking and give it to our relatives. So I'll choose this one. No. Yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So I just wanted to use that as an also a topical example over Christmas and. Um, just reflect back to you that obviously a lot of the examples that you were giving there had meaning for you in some way, shape or form. I mean, we learned a little bit about you based on what you described the meaning was um, for the image that you chose. So even something as simple as that, it starts to create a, a sense of, um, I don't know whether it's psychological safety, but you start to feel that you're getting to know people in the room. Um, and sometimes I think we, we overlook the really simple tools. So something as simple as that can start to create that sense of being part of something other than yourself within a team environment. Um, so the first thing to say about tools is that they don't have to be complex, sophisticated, um, even thought out beforehand. It's about responding to what's happening in the room and thinking about the context um, of where the team is coming from and something nice like Christmas everybody loves Christmas well most people love Christmas not everybody does but most people love Christmas um, so and even if you had somebody in the team who maybe you know it evoked for them something that was quite um, emotional and um, challenging then maybe it's an opportunity for the team then to support their colleague in understanding how they might help them 
you know, for example, if they're feeling lonely at Christmas, how might the team help them with that particular emotion? Um, so it's just something really nice and simple that gets you into that sharing and um, creating the, the, the trust environment within the team. So let's go back to um, the other one. So this is going to be a bit of jiggery pokery with the different uh, screens that I've got going. So bear with me, bear with me. Um, and I've lost that one now. Where did it go? There it is. Okay, so in writing this chapter on tools, what I decided to do was to create some categories that made sense around when we coach people in teams and individually as well, obviously not team dynamics, but some of these things apply to individual coaching as well. The first one obviously is that coaching process. So there are tools within the book that look at the coaching process. And, and obviously, before you can create tools around the coaching process, you need to have decided what your coaching process is. I've given you one of mine in the book, but that is not the only coaching process that is out there. There are loads and loads of different coaching processes. Um, so you can develop your own coaching tools that relate to the coaching process that you are using. Um, <clears throat> so that category is all about understanding how are you going to, for example, contract with the group? How are you going to create that safety? So the tool that we've just shared could be one of the ways that you actually help start to create that sense of um, sharing and trust within the group or team. Um, <clears throat> and obviously you, the pictures that you use will be context dependent on the team that you're working with. There might be some very relevant pictures that relate to the particular, particular industry that you're working in. There might be things that you want to share more personally, like Christmas. It could be a whole host of different things, but it just starts that process of getting to know each other. There are then tools around team growth and, the, and development. At the end of the day, one, one of the principles that I talk about when we're coaching teams is that we want to leave the team capable of coaching itself. So the tools in this section are all designed to help the team actually coach themselves. And so what we'll be doing in a few minutes um, is you'll be having a go and um, how many have we got? Three, four of you. Um, so I might just put you into two breakout rooms to see if you can come up with some tools yourself. And I'll give you a simple way of thinking about tools so that you can have something to work with and then come back in and share what you've done. Is everybody OK with that? Realise I'm throwing you in at the deep end here, but it'll all be good. If anything goes, there is no judgment in this environment. The next category is around team dynamics, and that includes things around conflict. It includes things around how energy evolves in a team and how you can help the energy, what happens when energy um, you know, drops, how you then work with the team and so on and so forth. So that's what those tools are about. And then there are some universal tools that apply um, to all kinds of different situations. So you, you basically have a pick and mix there. So I wanted to give categories of tools for the simple reason that if we um, have just a whole list of tools, it makes it difficult to understand when do I use which tool for which situation. And even though I've categorized them, you might find that some of the tools actually work in different situations. The key thing is that when we're coaching the team, we identify what is the context that the team is in and we use the most appropriate tool for that. So the other thing, so any questions on any of that before I move on? Sorry, I'm... I'm talking at you know I want to make sure that you're still with me <laughs> so there are although I've categorized it I would say there are no hard and fast rules because you're always using your judgment as a team coach it's the coaching has lots of tools and processes around it essentially it boils down to what I say these three things these are the three core components of tools in any kind of coaching the first one is questioning you need to have the ability to ask really great questions and sometimes that fails you. And sometimes you, you're thinking, what is the question that I need to be asking here? And so you say, what's the question that we need to be asking ourselves here? <laughs> Simple as, or it could be that you ask the team a question and you hear crickets and you go, okay, that question didn't really land, did it? What was it about that question that didn't work? And then you have a conversation about that. Or what might have been a better question to ask you? Um, so you're then asking the team to do the thinking around what's actually going on in the, the moment. Um, so questioning is a really great skill. Um, I'm still practicing it. After all these years, I don't consider myself to be an expert in questioning because you can, you know, you always learn stuff. Um, so I'm always learning stuff about questioning, reading, listening to other coaches, listening to conversations, listening, you know, Dean is really good at asking great questions. Um, so it, you're always learning stuff from every conversation that you have. And then obviously the corollary of questioning is listening. 
I would say that the questioning comes after the listening because you can't ask a great question until you've actually heard what the other person has said and you've heard what's going on in the team. So sometimes that isn't necessarily what's being said, it's about what isn't being said. So you're listening to the verbal stuff and you're listening to the non-verbal stuff as well. And that might be something around, so you, you're observing something in, in the team, you're listening and you're observing, and then you might say, what's, what's happening in the team at the moment? Let's just take a pause and see what's happening in the team at the moment. And that then gives them an opportunity for, to reflect themselves and to identify what they're hearing in the team as well. And then the final, what is this? It's like the um, the three the three rings or whatever of you know. It's like a Lord of the Rings trilogy. You've got the three of them. The observation skills because you can't listen. You can't ask great great questions. You'll need to apply your observation skills if you're listening as well. Because it's as I said, it's not just about the verbal cues that you're hearing. It's the non-verbal cues at the moment. So I'm seeing Dean is sat there, you know, like that. So that suggests to me that he's listening, um, and something's going on for him inside as he's listening to what I've just said there. Yeah. I don't know whether it is or not, but you can tell me, Dean, but I'm guessing from your body language that there's something going yeah, on. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's just very relevant to probably what, what, what I suppose all I've had over the last three decades around uh, business development. It's 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 100% uh, accurate to, if, you're, if you're in that space. So in other words, yeah, it's very relevant. Yeah. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop talking for a while and we're going to have a bit of a play. Um, and I'm going to see if I can share a whiteboard. If I can't, then, um, ah, excellent. So I'm going to give you a bit of content now. Um, oh, where's my whiteboard gone? Can you see a whiteboard? Yeah. Okay, it's gone there then. Okay, there it is. Okay, right. I'm going to have to move you over there. I apologise. I'll be looking at you over there, but I'll be here. So are you all up for having a go at developing maybe one tool together in pairs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So some simple tools and techniques to create tools. First of all, you've got your traditional, whoops, I apologize. I'm doing this with my left hand, so please forgive me. <laughs> you've got your four box model. So you've got a, a two axes. So, you know, you might be saying, you're, you're coming up with a tool that's comparing X with Y, yeah. And then you might say, okay, well, we've come up with X with Y and in these boxes, this, what, this is what it means. So that might be one tool you create. And obviously the content of the tool you'll come up with, but this is just a structure that you might wanna to use to create a tool. You then got your, uh, this is a bit of more tricky one to draw with the left hand. You then got your traditional Venn diagram. So again, this is where you, how might this relate to this? And obviously that is in the center part there. So again, you, you might have, um, just to give you an example, things I bring to the team, things I'm expecting from the team, how they, how do they relate to each other might be a tool that you create around using that format. You then might have ugh, your classic ladder model. And again, you might have different levels that you might be aspiring to within the team. I don't know. So they're just three very simple structures that you can use to create a tool. Is everybody OK with that in terms of how you do it? And then obviously you'll need to come up with the content yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, Aliona, are you able to create some breakout rooms? I'm back over here now. Yes. So is there no. any... Sorry. Can you is create... there any context? Uh... So teams, so when you're working with teams, think about some of the challenges that you've experienced working in a team and then see if you can create a tool that might help with, help give the team some insight as to what's actually happening or might help them resolve something or might help them come up with options, any of those or additional ones. Um, Just a heads up to everyone, I'm not a coach, I'm a psychologist, so you don't have no experience with coaching people. Absolutely fine, you don't need any experience with coaching people. Think about, from a psychological point of view, what are the challenges that teams face? What might you do in terms of creating a tool that could help with that using a simple structure? And okay. the simpler the better, yes. okay? So we're all ready to experiment and have a play. Yep. Awesome. So how long would you like? Three days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want to do this over Christmas, really. <laughs> yeah, I met my family. <laughs> <laughs> so if I gave you five five minutes, is that enough, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll do two breakout groups, Aliona, of five minutes each, please. And obviously we'll be excluded from the groups, but I'll pop into each group to see how you're getting on. And I'll pause the recording as well so that we don't have the, the five minute wait time. Okay, so when you're ready, Aliona, I know it normally takes a while for the breakout rooms to, uh, to work into action. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes.
was it was it really five minutes we it just was. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun doesn't it yeah. <laughs> so are you willing to share what you came up with yeah happy to share yeah go for it so so i, I was telling um fan of an issue i'd come across with, with a company uh, very recently so uh, basically the communication between the sales team and the marketing team was was quite poor and uh, the marketing team kind of thought the sales guys were lazy and the sales team couldn't really see which i think is i was just saying uh, they used to be kind of fairly calm but i hadn't heard in a while oh, <laughs> so, yeah. a of weeks ago. yeah so we, we were kind of looking at the venn diagram kind of as a tool right. and on the, le the left you'd have the sales on the right you'd have the marketing and in the middle you'd have kind of maybe communication tools so going down from the sales side we kind of have had bubbles with all their activities uh, and what they do in terms of uh, prospecting and on the right we had bubbles coming up from the marketing side in terms of maybe the platforms and technologies that they use and then coming down from the middle uh, maybe the communication platforms where they could come together that's one-to-one -one meetings presentations or other technology so that was that was as far as we got um, yeah you know. another thing i just thought of while you were speaking dean is maybe we could even do uh, the problems the sales team has with the marketing they could put that in one circle yeah. and then the problems the marketing team has with the yeah. sales they could put that in another circle yeah. and then in between they could have how would you resolve like tools to resolve those issues would yeah. maybe we want to but i don't know yeah. if we did it right but is that a tool we could create <laughs> brilliant love it i love both of those that's fantastic yeah very good very nice indeed awesome Cheers. so yumi and sarika Okay, I can start off, Yumi, and then you can dive in. Yeah. So I'll start with the outcome that we came up with and the challenge that we started with. So the challenge we started with is that the teams generally that we see have a lot of problems, especially coming up with different perspectives for the same problem. They're not able to think different and we need to challenge them, right? So of course, coaching questions, et cetera, all involved. Mm -hmm. Uh, the tool that we thought might help, we started off, of course, by thinking, and that's something I've commonly used as Edward de Bono's Six Thinking Hats. Uh, but then what Yumi suggested was brilliant, where we said, why don't we mix and match uh, the fact that people coming from different perspectives are also looking at it using a different lens from a different point in the context itself. So the when and the space from where they're thinking is different, and the point in time that we are thinking about is different. So it's really about two axes. So the tool that we started to just uh, talk about is maybe put it around two axes, the when could be one axis, the where could be another, whereas in the point in time, and then put the six perspectives in the middle. We didn't quite finalize how we were going to do that, but we're getting there, and that's where we kind of paused and came back to the main room. But yeah. Yumi, feel free to add if I miss something, or I miss no. the credit at all. No, I, I think you, you were absolutely right. I think our, our conception became a bit a bit difficult because I, I, I use the analogy of, of a ship, you know, depending on where you are at, on, on the ship, you will have a different viewpoint. So yeah. you can ask the team, let's let's first start in the crow's nest and let's look at it, the, the wider view and see where we're, where we're heading. And if we're at the prow, what are we seeing in, in front of us and where are we going, where are we heading? If we're in the, in, in the back of the, at the, at the, you know, at the back of the boat, what, what, what have we left behind and what has happened in the past? So it's, that's a bit of the, the, the where and, yeah. the, and, the, and the time difference. And then the six hats came in because you, yeah, that, that also, you know, that, that brings in, in those different perspectives. Uh, how can we look at it from, from the, from, from, you know, from the planning perspective and the emotional perspective? perspective and the ideas perspective so, yeah yeah but we haven't really yeah, nailed yeah, yeah. The, so you, the again the five again. minutes isn't long um but what you came up with in five minutes is absolutely awesome and, and yeah that thing around space and time is a really really good one um because it captures that context specific kind of things as well and different perspectives which is the, the bit that i heard you talking about when i came in as well so that's obviously where it started so i love all of those brilliant yeah so it just shows you how quickly you can actually create tools um you know just given some very, very simple approaches, you can just come up with tools very, very, very quickly. And so the one thing that I want to share exactly the kind of um, approach I use when I'm working with teams, whether it's groups, teams, training, whatever it is, I always want the, the teams to actually come up with the stuff themselves rather than um, usually when I'm working with Charlotte, the both of us telling the teams what to do. Um, it's way better if you come up with your own thinking. And so one of the concepts in the book is about uh, a team that I work with. The, the tool that we used was so, so simple. It was basically on a whiteboard. We had two columns um, and we had one thing on one side and one thing on the other. And that's the tool that the team came up with. And it made sense to them. So when we're coaching teams, we shouldn't go in with, you know, this is my toolkit. I'm going to do these tools to you. We go in with that questioning, listening, observing, 
we've got this in our backpack <laughs> that we can always pick out if, if we get stuck. But the key thing is that we've got the brains in the room and they're the people who really understand what it is they're trying to achieve um, and where they're trying to go to. And they know what the problem is. They just maybe haven't figured a way yet how to actually navigate it. So work with the brains that are in the room to come up with the tools. Give them some help in terms of if they're getting stuck with a bit of structure, give them some help, but rely on them to actually come up with the tools because they will be able to do that. Our job isn't to actually be front and center. It's to be either a side or invisible in the process. And when you're invisible in the process, you actually know that the team is now starting to self-coach. And remember, the prime directive is that team is capable of coaching itself when you leave the room. So that's the first thing I wanted to, to sort of bring in um, from what I've just heard there. And just to emphasize the point that the team chooses what help they need. You don't go in and diagnose and tell the team what help they need. They tell you, starting from the very beginning, before the team is even using you as a coach, when you're going in doing that discovery work, you're finding out what is it the team actually wants to work on. Do they actually want to work on anything? Are they ready to work on anything? That's before you even stepped into a coaching session. Um, and tools might be appropriate, they might not. Sometimes the best tool that you have is your presence. And that's why the, the, the picture of the gift is the thing that speaks to me the most, because when we're coaching, the greatest gift that we actually bring to the team is our presence as the coach. And that means that we're fully present with what's happening in the moment, that we are giving ourselves to the team in that moment. And we're switching off as much as we possibly can, all of the stuff that's going on for us in that moment as well. So this is particularly challenging when you've got a team that maybe is having a sort of a bit of an argy-bargy. Um, and that ability to stay detached from what's happening is really, really vital if you're going to help the team. So the tool that we bring that's the best tool is actually us as coaches. It's our presence that we bring into to the sessions. So I... I any questions on any of that before I do a final sort of share of some of the tools that I've used in previous existences in other parts of the world? I have a question. Go for it. Um, do you think someone creating a tool needs to have some sort of qualification for there to be credibility for that tool? Like, for example, I just need a tool. So now could I go to an organization and use it? Or do you think, because in psychology, you know, things need to be validated, they need to be tested. So do you think that applies to tools as well? Um, it depends what the tool is there to do. If you're there to use it as a diagnostic tool, so you're actually going in and you're 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 telling an organisation that this you know this is the kind of team that you've got, then you need to have some validity around the tool. So diagnostic tools, I would say, are, are probably different because you do need to have some um, credibility of the tool, particularly where you're talking about um, individuals and and anything that might sort of venture into the psychological area. Otherwise, I would say. The tool, you know, you create the tools as you need them. The tools are either useful or they're not. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, the same way, if, you, if you've got a, a, the only tool in your toolkit is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. Um, so it's that ability to flex and develop and create things that are context specific um, that help the team. At the end of the day, a tool is only there to help the team. You don't need to use tools at all. Um, so I would say the only tools that, are, that might be different are the diagnostic tools where you do need to have a bit of, um, you know, evaluation and reliability, the tool, particularly when it's in that domain of looking at individuals and, and how they work within teams. Okay, Great. thank you. That's very helpful, I think. Nice question, that. Nice question. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing um, my screen and I'm going to share some of the tools uh, that I've used with um, previous coaching clients. So um, one of them, one, when you're coaching, you normally do a sort of a review at the end of the coaching um, assignment. So an evaluation of some description and get the, the coaching clients to actually think about what they've gained, um, you know, where they started, what they've gained, how the journey has been. And so what I did was I captured all of the questions that I typically ask um, in those kind of sessions. And I categorized them into three categories. So impact, and I'm, I'm, the reason I'm showing you this card will become apparent in a minute. Impact, learning, application, and implementation. And under each of those headings, there are cards with different questions on. So under application implementation, there are two questions. Under learning, there are three questions. And under impact, there are two questions. So what I do is I place 
stacks of cards with their categories on the table and I ask them to choose the question that they want to answer in relation to reviewing the coaching. So they can choose any of those questions and if and they can also, I normally have, which I haven't got here, but I normally have some spare cards as well. So if they want to write a question that isn't there, they write the question and then they answer that question. Um, so in that way, they are completely in charge of their own coaching experience. Like, okay, what are the questions that are most important to you? If they're not there, then write them and answer those questions. So that's a tool that I did um, and, and seemed to work reasonably well. Uh, and you obviously can do variations on that. So I don't know, what are your thoughts on that tool? How might that help you working with teams? It might be possibly good for maybe brainstorming sessions, um, definitely around uh, issues um, or, or new innovations that you're looking to roll out. But uh, like sort of stuff we, we some of our team has recently it's probably been uh, quite effective. Brilliant, brilliant. Sarika. Yeah, I was just going to add to that. I think it's it's really great for brainstorming for sure. More idea building brings more, uh, you know, allows people to build on each other's ideas for sure. So yeah, nice, that's an nice. Thing. And then <clears throat> there's another one that um, this is one I'm, I'm testing at the moment, um, which is your lucky dip card. So this is where we actually get people to think um, deeper. So each team member chooses a, a card with a number on it, but they don't know why they're choosing the number. So that's the important thing. They don't know why. So it's one to 15. So pick a number. Let's just have some random numbers. Sarika, two. pick a number. Two. two. Okay. Give me two things that you've spotted about how we've worked today that have been, um, that work well. Um, openness and um, yeah, actually it's both speaking our mind and openness, but it's the same thing, but also, yeah, being optimistic and experimentative. More than two things, but okay. Fantastic. Okay. Dean, you. Yeah, <laughs> okay. 13. 13, right. Oh man, this is going to be, we, we won't go into all of these, but the question I'll give you, you can have a go with a couple of them. So 13 reasons why oh. the team should work <laughs> together well. Oh no. Um, you was coming, Dean. <laughs> oh, I should have went, went with one. <laughs> um, Just give a couple. Yeah, creates a fun environment. Uh, people want to come to work. Um, better productivity, better engagement, uh, better results. Um, uh, uh, no turnover of less turnover of staff um just yeah there's six that's not awesome. bad is it? that's awesome well yeah. done well done yeah fantastic everybody else yeah. go for number one <laughs> i think i know what the question's going to be yeah. you see you mean sorry um i'll go for number four number four so four things you enjoy work four things that you enjoy about working with teams Oh, I love working with teams. Um, <laughs> um, I guess uh, I love working with teams because I always learn something new um, with, uh, with all the different perspectives that are there. I love working with teams because um, of the uh, energy you see happening when people start collaborating and, and coming together. Um, I love working with teams because, oh, what am I learning? Um, I love working with teams when you actually um, see them building on each other's ideas and see them grow and, and um, uh, come up with new, new things. Um, and I love working with teams when you see them build, I guess, confidence in their own strengths um, and their shared strength. And that is uh, oh, yeah, a great thing to see. Yeah, fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. So Fatima, final number choice. Go for it. I'm going to play it safe and go with one. One. OK, <laughs> so one thing that you've learned about yourself in relation to coaching today. Um, I think so I think I had restricted myself a lot to only going with tools that had been pre-created and I had never thought that it's so simple to just start creating my own tools so that's I think something I can definitely start working now in my role fantastic fantastic so you've just proven that the, the new test tool actually does work yes <laughs> <laughs> well done that was brilliant brilliant work and so the final tool that I, I use which I love this tool this works really well in um, physical environments and obviously we can adapt it for the virtual world as well these are gift tags OK, so um, I'm going to give you each a virtual gift tag. And in the chat box, I would like you to write a little gift tag for um, somebody in the team. I, well, let's let's not do that because you might all choose the same person. So something that you are grateful for this this Christmas season. So gift tag each for you to write what you're grateful for this Christmas season.
Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Definitely agree with that one, Sarika. <laughs> Yay, reading my book. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Yumi. <laughs> yeah, it's a great time for reflection, isn't it? Definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. You've got a very good team there in D32, Dean. Very, very good team indeed. And I don't know if Aliona's, Aliona's probably worrying too much about the technology, but if you want to put something in there, please do, Aliona. <clears throat> okay, so let's just do the final few minutes of today's session then. So next year, I've set myself a New Year's resolution to do a series of um, sessions like these in relation to the book. And what I'm going to be doing is each um, week during each every other week in January, February, March, I'm going to be taking a chapter of the book and we're going to be going in a deep dive into that chapter. So you will need to have the book. So as part of the sort of prep work for the sessions, you'll need to read the chapter beforehand, come prepared with questions, and then we'll do a deep dive and maybe do some more activities like we've done today. Again, I'm very open to, to what people do. So I'm not going to be charging for the event, but what I will be asking you to do is to purchase a copy of the book so that you can actually read the chapter ahead and then come to the sessions uh, prepared. And again, the sessions are going to be every other week. So there are the dates, just to be absolutely clear, January the 13th and 27th, February the 10th and 24th, and March the 10th and 24th. They will start at 3 p.m. per time. So they're the dates for the sessions. So I look forward to seeing you on those sessions. Then in terms of the next steps after that, obviously buy the book, please. Um, contact me if you want to find out more about how you work with self-organizing teams in particular or teams in general. And obviously join, not next Thursday, sorry, the Thursday after New Year's, the 13th. So thank you very much for joining in the session today for your full participation. I've, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. It's been absolutely brilliant listening to what you've come up with in a very short space of time and also how you've started to work together in a sort of a team kind of environment. So it just shows what is possible. So the very final thing that I would like to say to you all is to have a very, very happy Christmas, a healthy and peaceful new year. And I look forward to seeing you all hopefully on the call in January. Thank you ever so much indeed. And I will stop recording now, hopefully. Thank you, Rowan. That was really, I learned a lot today. Thank you. Cheers.